Welcome everyone to the AI Research Bytes. This series of short informative talks showcase cutting edge research work from ServiceNow team. Service team. The AI Research Bytes are open to all, especially those interested in keeping up with the fast paced AI research community. Today's talk feature a 15 minute uh, talk from uh, Alex Pichet on reducing hallucination thanks to self-evaluation self and self-prompting. It will be followed by a 10-minute Q&A, as usual. Alex Pichet is a senior research scientist at ServiceNow Research and is interested in getting large language models to self-improve and self-align under minimal human supervision. He is currently completing his PhD at MILA with Université de Montréal. Up to you, Alex. Thank you, Fanny. Hi, everyone. I'm very excited to talk to you today about my latest work. Large language model can learn self-restraint through iterative self-reflection. I am Alexandre Pichet, and this is joint work with Aristide Milios, Dimitri Badano, and Christopher Paul. First thing, uh, safe arbor notice. Everything in this presentation is to the best of my knowledge. OK. So hallucinations are still one of the main barriers to widely deploying LLMs in production. And by hallucination, here I'm talking to text that does sound plausible, but is actually factually incorrect. And I don't have to tell you, I'm sure you experienced this yourself. Hallucination causes users to lose trust and they uh, to waste time. And here on the right, we can observe a uh, user experiment, experimenting frustration after losing time, uh, correcting the output of an LLM. Um, <clears throat> A few weeks ago, like uh, a researcher shared this uh, screenshot on, twi uh, on Twitter, which I thought was very interesting. Uh, this is GPT-4.0, the latest and brightest model from OpenAI. And the user asked the model about a specific vision language data set with different characteristics. And um, the model answer provide a very long answer. But if you start looking more carefully, like the data set name is hallucinated, this data set does not exist. Uh, the paper uh, does not exist either. The author does not exist. Uh, and of course, the first image on the first page does not exist. And even the GitHub ripple is hallucinated. So I know what you're going to tell me now. You're going to tell me, just use RAG, right? Just augment your generation with retrieve document. And that's going to solve all my hallucination problem, right? Right? Uh, not so fast. Yeah, a few weeks ago, Stanford published a, a report uh, and uh, called Hallucination Free, Assessing the Reliability of Leading AI Legal Research Tools. Uh, if you look at the figure here, at the bottom, we observe a commercial RAG system, Lexis, Wesla, Prakla, and then uh, GPT-4 without any uh, retrieval. Uh, and on the y-axis, we observe proportion of responses. So 20%, 40%, 60%. Okay. And the first thing we observe is the, the hallucination, which are defined as uh, including false statements or falsely asserting a source to support a statement. So indeed, we see that those RAG systems decrease hallucination. Right? They bring them from 40% to 20%. It's a good decrease, but it's... Um, it's not zero. And not only uh, this, but you, a RAG system were more likely to provide, uh, provide incomplete information. In this case, incomplete information is failing to address the user's query or failing to provide a proper citation for a factual claim. Okay, so the, uh, today, what I'm going to uh, answer as a question is, can large language model reduce their hallucination by learning to self-restrain. First, what do I mean by self-restrain? Uh, I mean, one's ability to uh, dynamically adapting their behavior based on their level of knowledge and uncertainty. So if the model is certain, I would like a very comprehensive answer of uh, my query. If the model is less certain, I would like a short, less detailed answer. And if the model does not know, I would like the model to just abstain and refer me to a, to a user. So for, for a second, think, what would you have to do for your specific use case if you want to teach self-restraint to your uh, LLM? I think your workflow would look something like this. 
first, you would have to, to identify what are the alls and what are the boundaries of the knowledge of your LLM. And then you would have to uh, alter appropriate responses, right? To write shorter answers here, abstain here. Uh, I'm sure, I think this is doable. This is a lot of work. Um, and me, I prefer uh, synthetic data generation. <laughs> so uh, even if the synthetic data generation is expensive, uh, it's done by machines, right? So it can be uh, scaled up on GPUs while you sleep. Uh, and also if the specification change, uh, once the code is written, you can just rerun the, um, the, the, the pipeline. While human data generation, it can be scaled up on cutting back on sleep. Um, and if the specification change, you might have to restart from scratch, which is not very nice. Okay. Um, synthetic data generation uh, allows you to automatically discover the knowledge boundaries of your LLM and automatically generate the best answer possible for your LLM based on a target accuracy row star chosen by the system designer. Here, row star is going to come back to the um, to the talk. So just keep in mind a design a set target accuracy chosen by uh, the designer. Okay. So let's make this more concrete. Let's look at the, uh, the biography task. So the biography task is quite simple. We just ask an LLM to write a biography of people. Uh, we're going to have a mix of well-known, lesser known and unknown entities. Uh, and in this specific use case, the LLM does not have access to Wikipedia or exter any external sources during training. Okay. So the algorithm I'm presenting is uh, what we call the research algorithm. It allows you to automatically generate synthetic data to train an LLM to show self-restraint. Okay. So the first step, what I call search, is you're going to query your LLM with a prompt. In this case, write a biography of Vannevar Bush of up to four sentences. And the language model is going to generate multiple possible uh, generation. After that, you're going to take each of these generation, and the model is going to split them into atomic claims. So here, for example, Vannevar Bush, uh, 1890, when he was born, is one atomic claim. Um, Vannevar Bush, 1892, is another one. And same thing for engineer, and you can see American mathematician. So atomic claims are very important in our framework. Uh, the model used them um, to, uh, to evaluate itself and to guide itself, but it's also uh, important for um, the evaluation. What we would like is a model that generates a lot of claims, atomic claims, and those claims to be accurate. So I'm going to refer to atomic claims again, and that's what I mean, the smallest piece of information. Okay, so now that we have all those claims, we, we have a problem, right? We need to evaluate the probability of a claim being true without any external source, uh, which we call reference-free. So I'm going to introduce you to a, a two-part principle that I like for self-evaluation. So the first part of this principle is truthful generations are all alike. So for example, here, uh, I'm interested in evaluating the probability of whenever Bush was an engineer as a claim. Uh, if I look in blue, which are sample from earlier, if you remember in blue, uh, you can see engineer is, um, is mentioned uh, one, twice, and three times. Uh, so the expected probability of an atomic claim being true according to the LLM, given this prompt, is going to be I, right? The second part of this um Principle, this principle is every hallucinated generation is hallucinated in its own way. So here, uh, we're interested in evaluating the likelihood of Vannevar Bush was born in 1892. And if you look again in blue, the generation that are from the LLM, we have that he was born in 1892, but he was also born in 1890. So the LLM is less likely to think that this claim is true. And it's going to say, oh, I'm not as sure. I call this principle the Anna Karenina principle for detecting hallucination in LLMs. Okay. So now that we have probabilities for every claims, 
we can sort them. So at the top, we have like uh, that he was an American engineer science advisor. So the model strongly believes in these. Uh, at the bottom, we are, we are uh, born in 1892, which the model does not believe. So using those claims, we can build a, a prompt. The model can build a prompt. Um, specifically, write the biography of Vannevar Bush of up to four sentences. The biography should include, but not be really limited to, the following facts. Uh, American engineer and science advisor. And we call this self-prompting. Okay, so now given though this new prompt, the LLM can generate new biographies. Uh, and you can see here like the, the the facts are all there in all every generation, and some of them disappear. Putting it all together, uh, we have an iterative process where the models start generating claims either from our input, from our prompt, or from is the prompt built to sell. Given those generation. Uh, claims, atomic claims are extracted. Those claims are evaluated uh, in a reference free manner. The claims are sorted and the model prompt itself. And we can go around. Okay, so if you use research, you're going to end up with a, a few dozen generation. And now you need to pick a single one to train your LLM. So I won't walk you through the math, but the idea is um, given the target accuracy rho star that we define, what we would like is if a generation has accuracy of at least row star, we would like it to have a, utility, a positive utility. If the model abstain, refuse to answer, utility of zero. And if the model generate uh, a sample that has accuracy below the target accuracy, row star, we want it to have negative utility. Okay. So here we have three utility function. You have 20%, 50%, and 80%. So focusing on the 50% for a second, we can see in the top of the, the figure, we have darker blues, uh, which is high utility. So this can happen when there's a lot of claims and those claims are accurate. So 100% accuracy, 10 claims, you get a very good score. Uh, at the, the bottom, if you tell me the model give me 10 claims and they all hallucinated, um, very low uh, utility. But the, the trick here is the model does not have to go in this region where there's a very negative utility. You can always choose zero by declining to answer. So the model generation should all be in the top rectangle here. And depending on your use case, you can move uh, the size of the rectangle to bigger, to smaller. So here, uh, that's what we did. We move this, uh, the target accuracy from 10% to 90%. Uh, and you can see a Pareto front of different models. Right? And the circle is the base model uh, before fine tuning. Uh, so you, you can imagine having a cautious use case where you want your model to be very careful. It's going to achieve over 80% accuracy, but produce something like three claims. If you have a creative use case, uh, you could lower the uh, target accuracy, and then you can have more claims and more accuracy than even the base model. Okay, so enough blah, blah, let's look at some samples. Show me the samples, right? All right, um, so let's start with Otto Kerner Sr., which is a less known entity. Uh, Mr. Kerner uh, was Attorney General of Illinois, uh, judge in the US, and a member of the Democratic Party. And uh, Mr. Kerner Sr. passed in 1952. So let's see what our model, this is Lama 2, uh, without fine tuning, the biography it gives us. So prominent American lawyer and politician from Illinois. Okay, good. Uh, United States Senator from 46 to 60. So he was never Senator uh, and he passed in 52. Uh, governor of Illinois from 61 to 68. I don't think so. Uh, key role in passage of the Civil Civil Rights Act of 64. I don't think so either. So either like, um, yeah, he had a very productive afterlife according to Lama 2 or Lama 2 is hallucinating, right? Uh, after fine tuning, our model focus on what it knows, believed to be true. So prominent American lawyer and politician from Illinois. So this is what we had in mind when we thought about self-restraint. Okay, so let's do an unknown entity, current Stavros, 
So maybe there's someone called Current Staros out there, but they don't have a very large internet presence. So we're not expecting Lama to, to know a lot about Mr. Stavros. So if you ask Lama to, it's going to be very, very glad to give you this very long biography. Greek Canadian businessman, uh, CEO of uh, Stavros Enterprise, born in Athens, moved to Canada, studied at U of T. Unfortunately, like this is all hallucinated. After fine tuning, our model automatically know that it cannot help you. And this is very impressive because we never trained the model on uh, unknown entity, but it, it knows that it shouldn't answer. So if we take a very well-known entity now, the footballer Ronaldo, um, what's going to be important for the next slide is that he is born in Itagüe, Brazil, and he won three FIFA World Player of the Year and two Ballon d'Or. So three FIFA, two Ballon d'Or. Okay. So before fine tuning, the biography is fairly accurate. But I think he was born in Rio. Uh, two FIFA World Cup Player of the Year and three Ballon d'Or. Um, and here I highlighted 94 because while he played for Brazil, he was not a key player. He didn't play a single match in this year. But I, I put it in yellow. It's good enough. After fine tuning, our models still make the mistake the two FIFA World Cup Player of the Year. But this is the only hallucination. But if you notice, if you look carefully, you can see there's not as many dates. There's not as many city. Uh, actually, there's no date and no city. So the model learned to become less detailed, but it becomes much more accurate. Okay, so now I show you three uh, samples. What does it look like in the aggregate? So over hundreds of sample. Um, just to make it short, our model is the blue star, the dark blue star here. Yeah? Uh, it's lemma two seven billion fine tune, and uh, the large uh, light blue here is lemma two seventy billion. So model ten times larger, and we can see we increase the accuracy a lot without uh, decreasing the number of claims too much. Uh, we are performed by a lot of the base models, and the baseline which is the triangle there. Okay. Okay. So to close. Uh, we have demonstrated that large language model can automatically learn self-restraint. And we believe that the same ideas could be used to reduce hallucination in uh, a RAG setting um, or a summarization setting. And if you think that the, this type of approach could be used in your case, I would love to chat. So either contact me on Teams or uh, via email. And please take a look at the paper. Uh, we have a lot of analysis in there, like a lot of samples. We're very happy with it. Thank you.